I'm Linda. I'm a reporter from the L.A. Times, and we were interested in using you and your spaceship for a cover story, and we were wondering Shut if you could... Shut up. Back in 1979, a little movie called Superwoman was released and immediately unreleased when DC, De uh, Detective Comics, uh, fucking sued the shit out of the producers who thought they could get away with using extremely direct names and iconography of freaking Superman in their low-rent porn joint. Good times. Long before you could get away with things like Justice League XXX or whatever, uh, the 1970s gave a lot more leeway and power to the studios who might not want parodies of their work put out into the world, at least not parodies as direct as this, much less with hardcore fucking in them. <laughs> Long story short, the title was changed to Miss Magnificent, and all mentions of the names Kent and Superwoman were dropped from the soundtrack. Uh, not even dubbed, by the way, like, just straight up dropped. Clark, can I help you? We got a product to deliver, guys. Time is money. And just to make it all that much more janky, well, you see, our busty heroine spends much of the runtime with a big ol' S logo on her chest and back, so, uh... Yeah, they, uh, they just scratched it off, like right off the film, like they scratched the emulsion off, which, you know, that's certainly a solution. Uh, what this means, of course, is that what was once a, uh, just, a, just a cheap imitation of the Superman logo uh, has now become an eyesore that's, oh boy, really tough to look past, and uh, <laughs> that might be a good thing. The lying, the cheating, the stealing, that's what I can't take anymore. Dealing with those people. I just can't take it anymore. All you need is a reason to keep living. All right, all right let's let's bring it back a bit. Uh, Miss Magnificent tells the story of this evil alien broad, Krita Borgia, played by Jesse St. James, whom I guess wants to rule the world sexually. Oh, Krita, you are a genius. I don't know, it's a porn superhero plot and her spaceship is carpeted. Anyway, uh, the only person standing in her way is Miss Magnificent, who also happens to be a plucky reporter. She's played by the always stimulating and generally wooden Desiree Cousteau. Uh, she of pretty peaches and hot and saucy pizza girls fame, as well as my dreams. Miss Magnificent spends her time mostly solving her problems the same way, such as with John Seaman over here, who is attempting suicide, only to be shown the light, uh, so to speak. Uh, the fucking itself isn't anything crazy, but there is a lot of it, and any time Desiree gets time to shine is typically a top-tier scene. Those Mazumbas! Admittedly, she's, you know, again, not exactly a stellar actress, but, uh, those Bazoombas! <laughs> Talking about porn while my child is in the next room screaming. Anyway, we also have Clark Clint, played by the legendary Mike Horner, as well as Lois Lay, as portrayed by Holly McCall, who get their own share of the action. McCall notably gets an anal scene with the domineering bad boy rocking white socks, David Morris, uh, which makes me wonder if Desiree simply wouldn't do it or demanded too much money. Horner, meanwhile, gets seduced by our cackling villain Krita to see if he's a secret superhero. It's a cute gag, and one of many scenes where Jesse St. James gets to chew so much carpet, I'm surprised she didn't get a girl-on-girl -girl scene. Where's the cr dildo? I'm gonna cornhole this fucker. That broad is eating. <sighs> Shock of shocks, what we get here isn't exactly an action extravaganza. I mean, peeps, you know, they get a lot of action, uh, but no one's getting thrown into a Coca-Cola sign, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, still, there is some attempt at creating superhero effects, like uh, Desiree Cousteau jumping in and out of windows on shabby sets. What a broad. And composited flying shots that, uh, they get an E for effort. In addition to scratching out the S logo, the producers here also censor any and all direct references to names and iconography, with the most obvious being the way Linda Kent's name is always said with the int cut out. I'm Linda I'm a reporter from the LA Times and- It, it sounds like a stutter. And uh, if you laugh at that, then you're an ableist piece of shit. Get the fuck out. I really get off on myself sometimes. There's also a great gag wherein Desiree convinces her car to start. Um, if that's the kind of humor you're looking for, well, um, 
it's not really super prevalent, but this is a light and joyful fuck flick, no doubt about it. Total party movie, if your party is cool with hardcore dickin'. Miss Magnificent was produced by Damon Christian, who gets a weird in-joke about a dumb shit produce truck driver Cretia is mad at, who is voiced by Christian. That'll teach you to park this fucking thing next to my tomato truck. I don't know. Uh, anyway, his work is pretty notable. He also produced a handful of Johnny Wad movies, the Renee Bond vehicles, Beach Blanket Bango, and High School Fantasies, and Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls, Disco Lady, and a few other Bob Chin joints through his Damon Christian Productions company. Also, he produced Plato's The Movie, which is now on top of my watch list, uh, all about the famed New York sex club. Uh, that film was also directed by this film's director, Joe Sherman, who also edited Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls, Heavenly Desire, and Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver, Jesus Christ. And Taxi Girls. Uh, small World, that 70s porn scene. Uh, that, the, the image quality here is probably not what you've come to expect from Vinegar Syndrome, and the added censorship it doesn't really help matters, but it's a completely serviceable transfer for the time. Uh, definitely something I'd like to see an updated HD version of, and it would be nice to have special features or like, uh... Subtitles? But hey, what you gonna do, right? It's it's still a movie that features a massive kryptonite dildo, so it's, uh, you know, it's it, it, it's got that going for it. And, uh... Look, Jesse St. James, looking like a bargain basement Power Rangers villain, fists her yellow henchwoman on top of a motorcycle while Holly McCall gives Mike Horner the old five-finger welcome wagon in the background. What more do you want? Circling back around to the censorship being good and bad, sure, it is distracting and an incredibly silly remnant of a bygone era, but it's also indicative of the hazards of... S indicative. <laughs> of the hazards of censorship at the time and the low-rent precautions that could be necessary in overcoming that studio overreach in a time before digital and with very little money to get it done. Pick up your skirt a little. I bet you got nice legs. It's kind of cool, kind of funny, and at the very least makes for some interesting history. It's currently available on this Bare Bones DVD from Vinegar Syndrome, which, while unlikely to get a solid upgrade anytime soon, I would definitely welcome and, uh double dip on like uh, like double penetration you get it yeah you get it go watch a movie pervert Break it, it's your ass.